ED. No. I figured it out. I figured it all out. All right. We we just going to throw away what happened last week because that's just, you know, some things are just, are, you just can't overcome certain things, right? You can't overcome other coaches in your head if you're one other coach. You get my drift there? I so, okay. wipe the slate clean on to Cincinnati. Okay, here we go. On to Cincinnati. This is the Believe in 49ers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. He is Super Bowl champion Eric Davis. I'm Rashawn Haylock. Plenty to get to on this show. Uh, some interesting injury news. Got some guys coming back. Uh, another guy maybe hopefully coming back. Um, and I I am calling it right now. I want this to be a Jeff Wilson Jr. game. Jeff Wilson Jr. Everybody say it with me. Jeff Wilson Jr. I want this to be a Jeff Wilson Jr. game. So we'll get into that a little bit as well. A big time game going to Cincinnati. They're a playoff team in the AFC. So we'll talk about that as well. As always, we want to encourage you to continue to download, subscribe, rate, and review. We're located wherever you find your podcast. If there's a like button uh, on your particular podcast subscription service or a follow button for that matter as well go ahead hit that like or follow button uh feel free to get involved in the show we're available on social media i'm at our haylock on twitter he is at underscore eric davis underscore and on instagram i'm at watch ray ray he is at eric davis underscore 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 that's four underscores mm-hmm. did i short your underscore there did I just only do three i think all right four four as in the beginning of the stages of this next four game win streak that the Niners are about to go on here, right? You got sometimes you just gotta just say it, right? You just gotta say it. Put it right, may, maybe it's just wishful thinking. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. All right. I don't I don't know if I don't hold me to that, people, in other words. But just know I'm thinking good thoughts. I'm thinking good thoughts. Um, as always, brought to you by the fine folks at Bet Online. Head on over to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50, that's BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, 550, to receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for you for the remainder of 2021 and as we get on into 2022. Bet online, where the game starts. He is Super Bowl champion Eric Davis. I'm Rashawn Haylock. So, thinking back on this Seattle game, right, and it just just didn't go right. You know, uh, there were opportunities there, lost opportunities. But there were some there. You just didn't take advantage of them. And we talked about it, you know, Pete just kind of being in in Kyle Shanahan's head. And I think the Seahawks overall as an organization, right, just feeling like, dude, we can beat these guys. We got these guys numbered. Kind of like I heard DeMarco Farr talk about this from a Rams perspective, saying the 49ers don't necessarily respect the Rams, right? Like they just feel like they can just beat them. And and. I think there's kind of like a similar thing coming from Seattle as it relates to the 49ers. And so I think that's one of those games where it's just like, all right, chalk it up. You know, like there are issues. We have issues in this building. We have issues playing this team, period. But especially on the road, uh, Jimmy who was the best quarterback in football for, you know, a number of weeks, according to the numbers. <laughs> but uh, it took, a little bit, <laughs> took a little bit of a step back, right? Took a little bit of a step back on – on Sunday in Seattle. So I think you just, you throw that away. You're in December now, it's winning time. All these games are big. You're playing against a Cincinnati team that's in their own playoff race, right? Right now they're the sixth seed in the AFC. Uh, As we tape this, as we record this, this particular episode, right now they sit in the sixth spot. So they got something to play for. And they got a quarterback who's going to be trying to throw the ball around with a broken pinky that he suffered last week, which Mm -hmm. he continued to play through. But uh, after a whole week off and, you know, seeing how that thing heals and whatnot, you know, maybe it'd be tougher for him. Maybe it won't. He was limited in practice on Thursday. So we'll see that that continues to be up in the air. As for the Niners, you get some guys back, right? Namely Fred Warner. And I think the linebacker core, played well. I think the front seven played well. I think it was a wasted opportunity because that was by far the best defensive line performance I've seen from this team all yeah, season long. Yeah. Without a doubt, right? Without I think we both, we both agree on that. Yes. But you get Fred Warner back, and oh. we talked about this a little bit. You know, Fred hasn't been necessarily the Fred that we're accustomed to, but he's a leader on this defensive unit. Yes. 
And you're going to need that, especially considering even more issues going on in the secondary. Uh, how much needed is Fred in there? What 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 kind of a jolt or boost can he bring in there as they go to the natty? Uh, well, down down the stretch, you just need Fred to play like Fred. That's all. We've seen how he can play. So now that's the standard. That the issue. Whether did I say this on the pod or did I say it on the pod after? I think the pod? you said the pod after the pod. Oh, okay, it's just a, you left a lot of gems on the pod after the pod. Well, I always dude. tell you that you just record. You do. So, one of these I, days, I, <laughs> I keep telling every. I keep telling them like when we stop because because what what they don't understand is that we really talk a whole another hour after yeah. the. Podcast. We have like two three other shows after and we're I'm done with this. You just hit record, and if it's if if it's no if it's not worthy of air, throw it away. But if I happen to say something or you happen to say something, there it is. But you don't want to put it on wax. That's I'm not thing. coachable, right? Is that not, that what that is? Not at all. Now with Fred, so. What I, I I told you this last, you know, last time we were talking about this with Fred, and no, you're not coachable. What um it, it you have to, it, it's it's one thing when you are trying to get that respect. You're trying to get people to actually audibly say, okay, he's balling. So you you fight and you scratch and you do these things and you play a certain way. Um, and you can always have that underdog. That why not me? Like, you know, like I'm going to make you see me type mentality. Um, and that's what Fred had. Everyone was like, this guy should be all pro. And they're calling him all pro Fred and all these type things. Well, but that's it's different now that you are actually all pro Fred. Now, those things that you do aren't special. They're expected. And you have to fix that in your head. I remember being there. I remember standing. I remember when I made the Pro Bowl. You, now, the very next game, I'm standing out in the huddle. And I'm like, okay, so now you walk out there and like, okay, how am I supposed to play? What am I supposed to do? And, and how it is. And, and, I, and, I, and it's funny. I, I really had that those thoughts. And I told myself, like, okay, like, this is different. It felt different because I'm like, are they expecting me to get a pick six today? Or are they are, are people expecting me to knock down 15 balls? Because now the attention is there. You aren't fighting it. I, and I had always been fighting to like, okay, I'm playing as well as all these other guys, but you don't get the recognition. And I literally, I was sitting there and Merton Hanks, it's funny, Merton Hanks, who had already made the Pro Bowl, and all pro and he, and he looked at me and uh, we were talking to him and I, and I said, man, I feel weird. And, and he just said, he said, E, why you feel weird? He's like, you ball out every Sunday. Let's go ball out. And I thought about it from a guy who had been there. You have to just get all of that out of your head and do what you do. So Fred, long story, you know, guys know I can give you long stories. Fred has to just put it, fix it in his head to stop trying to be all pro Fred. He is all pro Fred. Remember I told you about Bosa. Bosa, remember he had his leg? I was like, once he gets his, his leg is fixed, if they say he's healthy, I have a feeling he's going to play like Bosa. That's what he's doing. Guess, guess what? Go hunt the quarterback. He's hunting quarterbacks. Fred has to just do the things that he does. And your question was, how big of a boost will that give the offense, give the give the team in general? Fred playing and making those type plays, along with along with what you see um, Aziz doing, that the way that front played, that front four played last week. You get that behind them, Fred playing like Fred, Aziz is playing like an all pro. You get those that going, this defense could be a catalyst to move them forward. This defense could put them in position to do some things um, because you're going to need that front seven playing because the secondary is not strong. Let's just be honest about it. It's not. So you can't put that pressure on the secondary, but, but those guys are going to have to hold up. They're going to have to play some man to man. They're going to be put in positions of having to make plays down the field but that front seven making plays can help that tremendously. So that's the importance of Fred coming back and playing like that. You need him. If you're truly trying to make any type of noise here, 
um, while you're in this hunt, and especially this week going against a, a playoff caliber football team that just got their butts kicked, that's hungry, that need this game. Um, they could be within a fight with just within their division with Pittsburgh and all these things, you know, pretty soon here. So that's what you got to deal with right now. Uh, 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 you know, so you got to deal with that monster. Yeah, no, Pittsburgh is coming. And and as we tape, as we record this show, they're actually playing right now. So by time, you know, that that game ends up, you may have a whole nother situation on your hands if, if you're the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I commend the linebacking core because I think they showed up on Sunday. And it's... It's tough for me to say this, uh -oh. but I, I mentioned it. Uh, I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I mentioned it regarding Greenlaw because Aziz was playing so well, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously you have, you, you study this stuff more in depth than I do, right? You have, you have a much keener eye for, for, for this, this stuff than I do. But there was not one moment in that game where I was like, damn, like, if Ray was out here, like that didn't happen. No. On Sunday. Oh, that's, um, that's, is that is that a credit to the guys on Sunday? Or does that speak more to Fred maybe not being where we've expected him to be this season? Um well that's a credit to the guys that are playing on the field. They're playing at a very high level. And Fred hasn't played at an all pro level of the season. He's played well. And, and that's the it, that's the thing that you got to get in your head. You you got it's it's very difficult when those are the expectations. But that's how you play. It's how he played the previous couple of seasons. You just have to get you got to get over the label and just play. And I think that's a part of it because you hear it when you hear your general manager saying that okay, Fred's not having the year that we're expecting. Your coaches are saying you're not having the year. All the sports writer, he's not having the year. It's because the expectation is that you're going to do something great all the time. You just got to just focus and play. And, and I'm just telling you, I, I know it. I lived it. I felt it as a Niner. I felt it as, you know, I was a big time free agent that went to another team. And then you walk in and it's like, okay, these guys expect you to be Superman. They expect you, they, they really truly believe that you have an S on your chest and everybody, teammates included are waiting to see what you're going to do and how you're going to play. And um, you just have to get it out of your head that, that you know, that is just, that's white noise. So you, you have to do those things. And, and yeah, so there hasn't been a drop off. That's a testament to those guys. Greenlaw, good player, Aziz, he's coming along, good player. That deep, that room, the linebacking room is good. So that's credit to the front office for bringing those guys in. That's credit to the coaching staff for getting those guys playing to their potential. So that's a part of, and that's how you want it. You, you want Fred. He's, he is the leader of that room. He's a leader on this team. He is the measuring stick. You want everybody to play to that level. You want guys to push him. And that's what's happening. Yeah, no, that that that's definitely showed up and, and credit to Aziz for just, you know, balling out like the way he's done, you know, these these last couple of weeks. Um, also right, want to want to point out D, DJ Jones, too, as well. Uh, oh. Big Mike's been on. I'm late to this party, but a big, big Mike, our, our man, big Mike from nothing but Niners. He, he's been he's been talking about DJ for for years now. I'm, I'm late to this party, but. Uh, over the course of the last three weeks, like he's he's shown me something that I I had I hadn't seen from him. Like I my eyes finally opened up to him and and, and his contributions uh, to the squad. And, and 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 you know, truth be told, like he was he was getting game ball consideration. You know, had they ended up you know coming out with well, the thing. without question, yeah. But he's been playing that way for a while. He's he's been a consistent. Yeah, I'm late to the party. I I'm so late to the party. You like you, I told you, you're uncoachable. You just don't listen. <laughs> We've been telling you that, and we've had discussions about him before, even when you know when back in preseason. He's he he's a good player, and and he's he's solid. He makes plays. Um, he's disruptive, and that's what you got to have in your big boys up front. You know, when when they start making noise, then that's what happens. You you take advantage if you have a Bosa. 
someone's someone's gonna get the one on one. Yeah, and that's how we used to all. I mean, I Mike, we used to sit in there and we would hear the coaches all the time tell the big boys, you know, some someone's got easy duty. You get a one on one, you gotta win. The big boys, you you gotta win. You you know, because somebody's getting double teamed. So, and that's the same. That's the same when when you start getting the DJs up front making noise, they're gonna start collapsing down. Now, Bosa, go win, and that's how it works. And the way they were playing last week, that right there would cause any quarterback and any offensive play caller problems because you can't do anything when when all those big boys are in your backfield. It messes up your run game. It messes up your passing game. And I think that's key. Now, the the thing for me now is is that repeatable, right? And, and always go back to that, and and that goes back to to what you say about you know being consistent. Is it repeatable? Can you can this was the best performance we've seen from that group all season long? So can and they you wasted it? Is is this yeah? And and it was wasted, right? You end up with a big fat L. So can you continue this? you know, throughout the course of the rest of the season. Because if you can, I think that is going to be huge. That's going to pay huge dividends for this team. It's it's almost, I mean, in a sense, it's what was expected, right? Like, we've been saying that all season long. Like, okay, what we're saying, like, even during the, the win streak, okay, this is what was expected, the plan, um, you know, the formula, you know, the, what, what I like to call it. That was what was expected. And so, you know, you – all of that was deviated away from at the beginning of the year for whatever reasons. And now it seems like it's all starting to come together in a sense. You take a little bit of step back, you stub your toe out there in Seattle, but can that be repeatable? Can can the def, can what the defense did be repeatable in addition to the offense getting back to the formula and playing with, I feel like it's become a buzzword here in 2021, 20, complimentary football. Um, yes, the defense can repeat that. There was nothing that they did that, that was some type of specific scheme for a specific type offense that can't be repeated. And truth be told, the defense has had performances like this, um, several times this season. So I think they can do that. Now it was visible how the front was getting to Russell and keeping him in the pocket and what they were doing. Um, we didn't talk about it on the, right after the, on the first part of this week, but on the part after the part, I did mention that uh, D'Amico Ryan's had those guys playing. That was a very good scheme for one of the better quarterbacks in this league, and the way they were able to keep them keep them in the pocket, keep him harassed, um, cause trouble to that offense. That was a very good very good system. Because if you look at the look at the game, the final score doesn't show that. Okay, these guys, these, you know, you could first of all, you couldn't defend seven points, period. You yeah. had absolutely no chance whatsoever to defend seven. Then you get another turnover that what well, you had to ch- see that one you had a chance to defend, but you, you can take seven points off the board automatically. Um, because you you just didn't have an opportunity to do it. So with and that, the, sa- the safety, that's two. So that's nine points right there. Yeah, yeah, well, and I forgot about the safety. You're right. So that's that's nine points that you had no opportunity to defend. So if you look at it, you take that away, it wasn't a bad performance by this defense at all. And 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 they've had those type performances, and they just happen, you know, sometimes you get no offense whatsoever, you know, you just haven't had it. So I think the defense can continue to do this. You get Fred back just playing well and Fred just needs to just just play the way he plays and I think you'll see that more it, it it's going he'll figure out within himself how he has to get his mentals to deal with it and just play um because everything being said Fred's not having a bad year Fred's not playing poorly yeah. at all it, it's just the expectations is that he's supposed to make every single play Fred didn't make every play last year yeah. Fred misplays. He misplays the year before. Fred missed assignments, and he got beat on passes, and um, he missed tackles. All of those things happen, but when you are an all pro, spotlight's bigger. Spotlight's bigger on you. It's bigger, and when and when that happens, no one at any time pays attention to what you do well. They focus on what mistakes you make from that point on. When you do something great, you're supposed to. 
<laughs> that's just that's just the way it is. Like Kittle, the other day, I was someone asked me, you know, what did you think about Kittle? I said he played like 85. That's what he did the last game. Like, like he, he played well. I don't I expect him to play well. The issue is when he doesn't play well, right? Yeah. Or or not given the opportunities to do so. I, yes. I, I think I, I think you can add that along to that. Uh, Debo practice off to the side. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's a chance that he can come back. They, they seem pretty optimistic that he'll be back out there. I'm with you. I don't, I don't want to rush it. So if he's not ready, even with the state of the running back position, <laughs> Debo, the running back position, but yeah. I mean, it's a real thing. Even yeah. with the state of the running back position, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like, don't, don't rush him out there if he, if he's not, if he's not right. But apparently he was moving around pretty well on uh, during Thursday's practice. That being said, yeah. we know what Debo can bring. And if, if, if he's there, if he's lined up in the backfield and he's getting carries, then, then fine. Cause we, we, he's, he's shown the ability, he's shown the ability to be able to be the number one tailback on this team in, in games this year. But with that said, I would like to see more of Jeff Wilson Jr. I, I feel like he he through the years he's been somewhat of a key cog and an unsung hero of this running game, so to speak. And this year, I know obviously he, he he missed a whole bunch of time, you know, started the season on IR. But I would like, you know, for for him to get a little bit more, a little bit more time, a little bit more touches. We saw some glimpses of it in the Jacksonville game. Uh, but I'd like to see more. In, in all honesty, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that, or, or what you've seen from him. Yeah. Well, you know what? You would like to see that, but I would like to see. Before I tell you what, whether or not I'd like to see uh, Jeff Wilson, I want. I, I think you'd like to see some shiny, sparkly diamonds. I, I know how you are. Uh, you know. I, you know. Blame. I know it. So light boxes. Light They're 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 telling everybody say goodbye to the dull gifts. And light box. Light box labs have some. They have some lab-grown diamonds that will be the brightest gift of the year. So I see you starting to smile. Pretty soon you're gonna have a grill, probably. <laughs> so they, Lightbox uses cutting-edge top technology, and they have some extremely innovative techniques. And in using those, they have cracked the science of sparkle. They create the highest quality lab-grown diamonds you guys are gonna find anywhere at a very light price, eight hundred dollars per carat um guys like radio here understands that's pretty cheap for a carrot hey you know make a good christmas present you know that, that's that's what we're talking about so women, women now, like diamonds now now listen these diamonds have the same chemical makeup of a natural diamond but they're grown in the lab so because of this process uh they can create stones in a blush pink they can do it in a blue and of course you get the classic white shiny white that Radios will probably get in his Christmas grill. So Lightbox Diamonds are a gift that will never, <laughs> it's a gift that people will never want to take off, all right? And it's at, it's at a price so that they don't have to take them off. You don't have to worry about it. The sparkle will work with any out, outfit you got going. So go to lightboxjewelry.com and you can add a little sparkle to your holiday shopping. That is lightboxjewelry.com. Here comes a tagline, Lightbox Diamond, never a dull moment. True story. But Some of my formative years were doing the whole uh, cash money records mm-hmm. uh, when they just oh. Oh. ran everything, oh. right? Oh. Oh. Um, so to say it, it, it was never discussed about me getting a grill would be a lie. Now, I never went through with it, but that's not to say that I didn't want one. <laughs> Man, I didn't even wear a mouthpiece when I played. The true story. I didn't even wear a mouthpiece on the football field. So I was like, what am I going to walk around with a grill? I, I, I didn't even wear, I, I just, I had too much talking to do on the field. Not two people, to one, to each other. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. People, people don't realize exactly how much talking you do during a play because you're literally talking from the time you get the call. And I had a routine that I would go through my head. So when I got the call, there was a certain way I would repeat it. I would do it. And I would think about the thing, everything that could happen in within that call while you're looking at everything that was happening. So then you're talking to someone about where you are and what's going on, you know, strengths calls and all these type things. For and it's loud. And all these things that are going on. And then as the play is happening, you're passing things along to guys. And even when you're coming up to make a tackle, 
you're not just running blind. You're running, you're coming to make a tackle. You're saying inside, inside, outside, outside. So, so that the guy, the other guy who's making the tackle, he knows where you're coming from. So he knows how to approach. So I, I didn't have time for a grill, man, but you know, I guess you on the sideline, you can, <laughs> you know, you can interview with your grill on, right? Back, I wasn't even on the sideline back then. Back then I was, I was in the game of life, baby. I was in, I was in the club trying to shoot. I was in there. That's where I was at. <laughs> That's where I was at with it. You know what I'm saying? That was a whole different. That's a whole different me, bro. Whole different me. Oh, look at him! Look at oh, uh -huh. <laughs> that's when he was out in them streets. I was in them streets. He was in them, not streets. streets. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know it. That's, okay, let's get back that, to the show. Let's get back to the show. Jeff Wilson Jr. Yeah, that's what we were uh, talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know what? Jeff Wilson could be my guy if he's healthy. We just need a healthy running back um, to be able to tote the rock. Someone's got to hold on to that little brown baby so that you can commit to the run. Shanahan's offense works best when they are committed to the run. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily like Belichick, level commitment but <laughs> that's next level as long as you are committed to the run and you you know how i feel about that it's i don't care if it's two yards a carry this offense is built off of run action not play action but run action passing so you got to get a defense playing the run even if they are even if you're not consistently winning big you got to be committed to do it and we've seen games where they were just like now nah, i'm going to abandon it it hasn't worked out so you got to figure out a way to work with that and you got to you have to do it so if jeff jeff wilson's healthy enough to be that guy that's the that's the problem we say that about the running back position a lot Everybody, of guys a lot of guys if, if this guy is healthy enough i mean the whole running back room right i mean kyle's yeah, supposed you, to work out some guys this week uh so we'll see yeah. Um, time now for your keys, Ed. Niners going to Cincy, taking on the Bengals. Uh, I think our first pod, or one of our first pods, but it was early in the season, right? I think they went to Tampa, then they went to Cincy right after that, and it was a whole. The 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 Niners fans were the faithful were were all in Cincinnati. It was almost like a Cincinnati home game. Uh, this was a couple years ago. It's kind of taking us back to the beginning of this of this podcast, ED, uh, mm -hmm. as I as I get all nostal nostalgic here. But anyways, uh, Niners Bengals, your keys, ED. Um, it's going to be important to let last week go, as you said, um, on to Cincinnati. I think that's that's a very, very important part of it to really um, understand that you you weren't prepared and and now pack your defense, pack your special teams, but it's got to begin with the plan. Kyle has to have he has to let this group understand and get it through their heads that you and I'm saying Kyle because it doesn't seem that the locker room has taken over just yet. And that's very important. Uh, a, a playoff team, a championship team, definitely is going to take over. They're not going to leave it up to the coaches and no one is taking over yet. So, but the coach's job is to guide them until that happens. So the plan has to be set to where everyone is playing sound ball and play up to the capabilities that they have. Um, it's going to be important for that front seven defensively against Cincinnati's offense. We're going to need another performance that you had. You're going to have to harass whoever is quarterbacking back there. You're going to have to harass them uh, because the secondary has not been holding up. There's no one that's playing. I don't know who's starting at corner right now. There's no one that has been playing outside of um, E-Man um, at a consistent, at, at a, a, a high enough level consistently for any offense to really concern themselves and when you are going into a game where there is no fear factor for an offense you can see a lot of balls down the field so it's going to be important for the front seven to really we talk about complementary ball offense and defense it's going to be important for the, that front end to help out the back end um, because the back end is not strong enough to really be the catalyst for good defense right now so that's what's going to have to happen on that side special teams 
don't stink it up. That's my coaching point. That's 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 the key. Special teams, don't stink it up. Don't lose the game for the football team. That's what you did last week. Don't lose the game for the football team. Uh, offensively, we talked about it. You got to find a way to get something going in the run game. Um, you're going to have to find a way to make certain that you don't turn the ball over uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. It's your team now. Jimmy needs to have a better performance um, without he, – he needs to have a Jimmy performance without the turnovers. If you can – this this is a game, biggest key, no turnovers. And I believe if you come out of this game with no turnovers, getting the special team, pack the special teams, and you show up, and I don't need you to run one back. It'd be okay if you do. But what I do need you to, to do is not give up a return for a touchdown. Uh, to not fumble the ball. So if you can just get a push out of that, the defense plays well, offensively, um, no turnovers, that's that's got to be the formula to win this game. Can't, don't go on the road and give it, give it up again. Give up the ball. So those are ED's keys, ED's keys here on the Believe in 49ers podcast. So you look at this Bengals team, right? They start off the season five and two. They're now seven and five. Mm-hmm. Um, so we can all do that math. They marked incredible improvement from last season to this season, which, which, which is good on them, but they're entering uncharted territory here in terms of, you know, being in playoff contention, fighting for a playoff spot, this, that, or the other, uh, you, if you're the Niners, I think that, that you need to, to, to feed, to feed on that. Also, when, when you look at this. Will nine wins get you like it's December? It's winning time right now, uh-huh. obviously, right? Will nine wins get you in? I don't think so. I think I, I said ten and seven. I said ten and seven starting out, and I'm sticking to it. You know, you know why? Because I said it. Yeah. I thought then it was gonna take ten wins. I still think it's gonna take you ten wins to get into the playoffs. And even with that extra game, it's it's hard. It's hard to win double digit games in the NFL people. That's that's why I think if you get to 10, you get yourself into the playoffs. It's very rare that you win 10 games. And um, it, it's very rare that a season comes across that you needed 11. 10 normally does it. And I think it's still gonna be that way. I don't think nine is gonna do it. I think 10 gets you in. I think nine might when you consider the teams after you, you look at Philly, you look at Minnesota. Uh, these are teams you all have, you have this tiebreaker over, right? So it, nine is possible. I think 10 gets you in. So I think that mindset has to be towards, okay, we need to figure out what we can do, you know, to win uh, 10 games. If you're the Niners, that's winning four out of the next five. Now, as I start to look at this schedule, I'm Ooh. feeling a little bit, there was one game in there that I, that I thought, okay, th- this probably is not happening. That's the Tennessee game. It's on a short week. It's on a Thursday night as well in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, become a little bit more optimistic about that game. It's going to be a tough one. It's, it's going to be a Thursday night affair on the road, short turnaround. Uh, but I, I'm starting to believe more in um, the chances the Niners have in that game. When you just look at uh, what Kyle is able to do uh, and, and and how that will go, and we're going down a whole different road here. But I'm I'm beginning to be, becoming to be a little bit more optimistic about that game, right? So, I'm, so I'm that, we can get closer to that one before. Yeah. I run. So 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 that's that. So you got five winnable games here. Mm-hmm. Not sure you won all five of them, but you got five winnable games here. You need to win four out of five to get ten wins. I think that I think that's critical. I think you're getting into a, a, a territory right now where. You know, wins are at a premium, so you you better start snatching them up. You know, as, as much as you can and as best as you can. And it starts this Sunday in Cincinnati on the road uh, against a team that's a playoff caliber team right now. But I mean, let's face it, they're young; they haven't been there before. This Niners team has a little bit more seasoning uh, underneath their belt, so you got to take advantage of that, in my opinion. And you got to you can't let you can't let week thirteen beat you in week fourteen. No, you absolutely can't. Uh, and, and so that, that that's just sort of sort of where I am with it right now. And so look, we'll see. These these are important games. These are these are season determining games coming up right here for oh, well, for the game, Niners. 
every game from this point on is a playoff game. That's that's where it is. The, the Niners have put in, they've put themselves in position by losing to Seattle, a bad football team. Let's forget the other ones. Seattle's a bad football team. You've lost to them twice. By losing those two games, you put yourself in a dogfight. So it's week to week now because there's you don't have room. You, there, there's no room for error right now. And that's And that's just how it is. So they have to look at every game. And it's good that you're actually going on the road against a team that you can't overlook. Um, obviously, they did that last week. You can't overlook this team because as everything you just said. It's a young team, but they vastly improved. Um, they have talent. They definitely have the talent. Have the talent. To be, yeah. So you have to you have to respect that talent and be prepared to play. And and that focus should be there because, as I said, every game is going to matter right now. Every game matters. You know they got they got some dudes they, they, on on the outside. You got T Higgins who who's blossoming into a pretty good receiver, and you got Jamar Chase who who may be the rookie of the year. Look, he he's got he's had the dropsies this year, but he's also made some really big time catches. He's got a lot of catches and a lot of yards. So that though and 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 that relationship with Burrow goes all the way back to to the the Bayou Bingo day. So mm-hmm. I mean that's that that's something there as well. Um, so I mean obviously you can't overlook this thing, but. Um, I think you you get after Burrow, you you apply some pressure to him uh, and, and see just how well he's going to be able to throw the ball with that that broken pinky. Uh, One twenty five kickoff. It'll be the Niners in Cincinnati taking on the Bengals. That'll be on CBS, and of course we'll be back here to break it down for you next week. Uh, time to start a new streak. It's time to start a new streak. It's, it's time to get a refill on my pina coladas. That's what it's time for, Ed. So that'll be that. Uh, for Super Bowl champion, Eric Davis, I'm Rashawn Haylock. This has been the Believe in 49ers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. We will see y'all next week. Peace.